Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Commodities Report and starting with the uh, US dollar here. So we're expecting the US dollar to move down into wave 3, 4 and 5 here before turning up and we are trying to confirm this particular first move in, in through here in actually having an impulse wave in that first move there. Now we don't quite have five waves in that move there just yet and it's still going to take about a week to get that five wave structure there to confirm that. On the flip side when we look at um, we expect the the yields to do the US yields to do the same the same thing we've had our five waves up here we've got an A wave a B wave and we're looking for a C wave to move down here I'm on a weekly chart at the moment so it's quite quite large here but um uh, we're also looking for five waves down in this little move here that we don't quite have yet. And we've talked about that on the intraday a lot, um, but I won't go into the intraday at the moment for, for that. But we do have a nice ABC pattern up here for that. But we can't confirm the downtrend until we get an impulse wave here. So we're not quite there. And then we should be seeing the bonds in reverse. So the yields down, the dollar down and the bonds up and... Um, with the bonds here just on the uh, on the weekly chart here we're looking at this being an A and a B and a C wave here we also don't have five waves up here yet either so we can't confirm that this B wave is in play here just yet so um, we just still got to uh, to chill on that um, but at the same time we have been making moves because if the bonds are going to be going up here and the yields are going to be going down the dollar more so the dollar down we'll be seeing uh, gold push to the uh, push to the upside which we are seeing um, and we'll talk about gold uh, in a moment. But these three here, the yields, the, the bonds, the dollar and the yields, haven't confirmed their next trend just yet. But like I said, we have been making moves into the, uh, into the gold uh, space. And we'll look at that uh, in a moment. Um, on the flip side of the dollar, of course, uh, here, is that we have... Um, <clears throat> Uh, we have the euro to the upside. So today I'm just going to use a few charts that are in our uh, from our other analysts uh, in the in the marketplace. So um, let's just go and have a little look at the euro because we've got long trades in the um, uh, in the euro at the moment as well and in other pairs. So it's it's you know we have been making a move into uh, into these markets. So. This is the uh, the euro here, just bringing that into shape here. So even though we don't have a larger five waves up here, we've got this wave one here, two here, one and two. So we have been making a move into this uh, particular space. So these are just some open positions uh, here. So we don't want those. So on the uh, on the uh, on the pendings here, I haven't pushed these across yet, but we've also just put in adding to this position and, and looking for a short sell on the same side as the dollar. So we have been moving into uh, in, in, into these markets uh, as such, you know. So we'll continue continue to build in on on all of these. Um, it'll just take. Uh, we've got positions in the Australian dollar as well, so we're going to be looking to add to these positions uh, in here. Uh, for those so you know the 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 commodities you know be it um softs or grains or metals they will also reprice um on the on the dollar uh, uh index as, as well the dixie so we'll just uh wait and see so we're just really trying to confirm that you see you can see here that we've got one two and I mean, labeling it three waves is, you know, five waves is okay. It's, 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 <clears throat> it's, it's easy to do that. But at the same time, you know, this can just be an A and a B and a C correction down to, down to this low, wherever that low may be here. So that could be a corrective pattern and move up. So we need to confirm it. But at the same time, we're reasonably confident in things. So we have been moving into all sorts of commodities, um, be them, you know, different futures contracts, Forex, uh, all, you know, those derivatives on those sides. So uh, that is that.
little triangle here. So basically just coming back here, the dollar, the bonds and the yields and also the the FX side web uh, building into. Um, so that's that's uh, that. So um, I should have done Bitcoin first, but um, I think these markets here are a little bit more in, important. But uh, let's have a look at Bitcoin uh, here. This is a weekly chart for Bitcoin. And uh, I'm not sure why I've got that there. I'm a bit of a lazy chartist, really. But um, whichever, there's different ways to, to, we'll talk about this a little bit. So, I mean, obviously, we're at the old highs here. You know that the the narrative on the uh, on the on, on the ETFs and um, and the halving coming up it's all over the internet. I don't need to discuss that at all. There's uh, other folks doing that. Um, in terms of this trend moving up here, as I've always mentioned, uh, that going through an old high here, it's you know sometimes we can just be a hot knife going through butter and continue to the upside it's possible there's a strong enough narrative for that but generally speaking we would see a retest of that of that move now you could get a market that could shy off from the old highs a bit early or on the old highs or a little bit further up and so on and so on um so we can see currently here the week's not over these these are uh, we're seeing an uptrend here in increasing volume to the upside on the weekly. But that's not quite the same as the monthly, actually. So if I just come back to the monthly and gather four weeks together there, we can see that um, this, these, these, this month here from Coinbase here, uh, that uh, we've actually got diminishing volume uh, coming in at these points. Obviously, this month is not completed and we're at the 13th, so it's highly likely we're going to see more volume come in than the previous month. But at the same time, the range is quite is smaller as well than the previous month here. So I think that we could end up creeping higher here um, and then eventually coming back and retesting the old highs here. So further to the upside, you know, our numbers here are 65, 72 and 80. So we could push up into the, um, into the 80 and come back and test the, you know, the 68 or something of that nature in, in all of that. Uh, in terms of counting it to the upside, uh, it's pretty straightforward up until a point. So most Elliott people that, uh, that Elliott analysts would have this as wave one and two here and then one and two, uh, here. Now, this little move to the upside here, this is where you'll get variations of things. And that's okay as well. It's not that somebody's right or wrong. Look, somebody's going to be right. Somebody's going to be wrong. But um, the main point when you're counting is that, you know, it, it, things can extend out because you can quite simply get a move that's a nice little five-wave structure like this and everything's hunky-dory and you get your ABC and then you go up again and, and all that's fine and that makes life easier. But sometimes you get moves that, that, that give you a one and two and a one and two and a one and two and a one and two and, and then they keep sort of built, you know, then you go into your threes and fours and they start built so that you can get that kind of structure to the upside. So you can get variations of things. And when you get into these things here, then they could, could be counted a little bit differently. But basically, if most people will be that are counting this, no matter who they are, they'll be, you know, if they're on the, if they're on, you know, the internet and they've been there for a while, um, you know, they'll, they'll be fine because basically what we're, what they're all saying in a nutshell is that we are seeing five, we're seeing impulse waves to the upside, not corrective waves, you know, so we're in, we're definitely in a trend. It's just how you go to count it at this point. Now, I know that, um, some folks have got where I've got wave one here uh, and two here. They could put wave three there and uh, and wave four. Where's that wave four gone? I mean, you could put wave four in there. So you have one and two and three, four, five. But you see that little green line here? That green line here would be from the low to the top there. That would be the same length as wave one. So we would normally expect wave three to be compared to wave one here a bit longer. So we could drag that up there. So then it comes to the point um, 
well, how do we count this up up here then? You know, um, obviously we could look at this as one, two, three, four here. It makes a nice fourth wave here going sideways. And we are seeing a lot of volume come in here, aren't we? You know, in this in this little area here. I mean, it's quite excessive. But really the market's not going that far either. So we could obviously assume that some of this volume here is part profit taking. And we are seeing the market sort of creep to the upside there. Uh you know, I could label this wave one and two here. I could also just extend this out. So if that green line is the same length of this low of wave one here to this wave one here, so going up here, we could still focus on this wave three here and we could rebuild this here in one and two and one and two and three and four. So we could continue to build this to, to the, uh, to, to the upside. It's not 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 really a, a sort of a drama in this point um, in terms of the trading levels which i won't go into at this point but uh you know that 65 uh is the medium level and then you've got 72 and then you've got 80 here so basically what the market has done so far it's found itself um on support uh in we can just put a heavier line through here to give it a bit of definition so if that's the 65 here, roughly speaking, it, what it's trying to do is it's trying to find support on that 65 and the 65, the next number in here, obviously the 70 is really important, but uh, the 72 is, there's lots of important numbers between 65 and 80. So, but I just work with the shell of them in the bigger picture. So the 65, 72 and the 80. So what it's trying to do is trying to find support in, in here. And normally we would see some consolidation uh, in this uh, space uh, between 65 and, and 80 here. And we could put in the 72 as well uh, here. Um, we'll just plonk that in there and give that a uh, bit of definition there so we'll just put that 72 do i need commas for this no that's fine so that's that's the 72 there so it's just trying to find support on 65 and it, if it can do that then it locks itself into this into this move here but we we should be going to the upside i just want to have a look at the intraday pattern on the crypto index here so look this will be much the same as bitcoin but this crypto index here is, is just the top 10 crypto you may have this you may not but that move down from the top here right this will be the same as bitcoin but this move down from the top here this is a corrective pattern and this is an impulsive pattern here so what we're going to see with um what we're going to see with with this here is probably some sort of um a, B, C pattern here and then further upside. So this is a corrective bullish pat pattern. So that that resistance at 72 here on, on Bitcoin, um, uh, we'll see, see that as, um, let's just find it here again, Bitcoin here. Uh, this is my other Bitcoin chart here. So yeah, so this is what we talked about yesterday. So one and two and one and two. Now this doesn't have to be true here, this one and two. It doesn't have to be true at this point, right? It's just a bit of a long shot, um, which will take it much higher. But all I'm saying here is that um, this, uh, this, these uh, moves here, let me just get these out of the way here. So yeah, so yesterday we're looking for one and two. And as I just explained on the crypto index, that uh, is a corrective pattern and we should see that uh, move to the upside. So we can view this in terms of uh, just trying to find a uh, thing here. So we should see three, four, five up here in, in this sense, something of this nature here. It's got some support on the 65, 72 and the 80 here, but uh, I always expect that there will be... Um, you know in this space i expect that there will be like a some sort of consolidation in in here i kind of like to see that because what happens later on if i can just uh explain something which i'll just remove this here so i've got a bit of access so to me it's all about this number up here now so what i'm sort of thinking is that what normally happens is that i'll just draw it over here we get some kind of consolidation in this space here and then we push up, we push back, we find that support here, and then we push up into one, two, or three over here, right? And then we'll end up with some sort of ABC pattern. But all this consolidation that occurs through here becomes the support over this area here.
that's how I normally see it. And really this pattern at the top here at one at, at 100,000 is really just trading level one and we'll see the arrival, the reaction. And this support here will be the support that's being gleaned now over here. And then we'll have the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level and ABC pattern. And then we go up again at that point. So, you know, I mean, I just see this number one here as, <clears throat> as treated as $1 and 80 cents and 72 cents and 65 cents or, or $80 and 100. All that. It's always the same. It's just human nature making these patterns. It's me and you that are doing all of this. So uh, that's how I sort of see the bigger picture anyway. So uh, yeah, so just to rehash, this particular move from wave two here all the way up here, it can be counted in different ways. So if you've got a different count or you see another Elliott person that's got a count, they could be right as well. It doesn't really matter. It's just that we can see that... Um, that uh, the volume is telling us that we're going to start to see, like the market's quite strong in here. <clears throat> we're going to see, uh, based on the volume, we can see that, yes, the market will edge higher, but uh, we can also see profit taking coming uh, in there as well. Um, but the trend is still intact. So it'd be nice to see some consolidation between 80 and 65 in here because it will become the support later on over here that will give us a nice safety net of support there. Um, all right, well, I'm just going to leave that at that and we're just going to go back on track with the um, with the commodity. So we've been through the bonds, the yields and the dollar. Um, I'll just have a look at the corporate bonds here for a moment. Yeah, so they're all pretty good as well at this point so they're going to be sort of heading higher here in this um uh in this consolidation uh pattern here for this this is all it's got overlapping wave structure so it's corrective so we're going to see these um high yield bonds uh, etfs moves up and i'll just have a quick look at um at these guys here as well. That's just exactly the same as the TLTs here on this another uh, ETF, uh, Black Rocks ETF. And I just want to have a look at the notes for a second as well while we're here. Yeah, I see the thing is, is that this move up here that I'm, what I'm trying to confirm with the dollar yields and bonds is I'm trying to confirm another little move here and then, then the ABC and then all I need to see here, this is one and two here and this is five waves in this little move here. So that's three, four and five. So if I get five waves here, then I'm going to get a corrective pattern and go up and that will confirm to me that if I can, because at the moment this is just an A and a B and a C and what could actually happen here, I'm just pointing it out is it is it can move down you know we could go one two three four five and come down here as an a b and c wave coming down a bit further so yeah an a and a b and one and two and three and four and five and then go up you know <clears throat> which puts it puts a bit of a uh, dog leg in all the other positions that we have so this is why it's important that you know we sort this out here like i said i think we're going to get the fifth wave here because um what we're seeing in gold so we'll have a look at gold now and uh with gold there's two ways to count this to the upside this is an ambitious sort of count here um but yeah i mean if i go back out to my uh, monthly chart uh here if i got this one labels yeah so uh yeah just sort of going back to, going way back over here um <clears throat> log scale here this is pulled back i rem i remember all, i remember all of this i remember all of this um so um yeah we had a target down here of 300 um but anyway um yeah so I've, this is this the, the interesting thing here this this you know this one and two here this is actually pulled back you know 72 percent basically do you know what i mean so it's not going to be a way four here you know not pulling back that deeply on a log scale um so to look at this as one and two and one and two to go up here uh, makes, most people have got this as three and four, so that's cool. All I'm saying is I've got this here as one, two, three, four, and then up here, five waves up here for one and two, and then continuing higher. So that's, you know, a bigger, uh, bullish picture, which, um, 
So anyway, that's that. So the question is, is that I think most Elliot people agree that we've got three and an A and a B and a C for four here and up for one and two. And then this is where it becomes a little bit tricky here because we don't have a very clear wave one up there. When I pull it apart, I can get five waves out of it. So I've gone for a picture that um, would look at this here as one and two here and then one and two and then basically, basically just building further up to the upside here, three, four, and five up here, and and then coming back and checking these highs here for support, and then moving up that kind of normal sort of thing. But there is a case where you can put wave three over here, wave four here as an ending diagonal triangle, and bring this down here and have this top in place here. And <clears throat> so, so we are covering that, and um, our... Um, Analyst, where are we going here? Not this one. Oh, this, sorry. The browser's open. Let's just check on this for a moment into the commodity charts here. I was going to look at the softs today, but um, I won't do, I might have a look at Coco because that's kind of making a new high. But in the meantime, I just want to have a look at gold and show you the other count here. So just on the daily chart here, so wave three here and four here, then one, two, and then three and four. So quite a top at this particular point here, <clears throat> and then four and then five here for this, you know. So it, this is a shorter version to the upside. We do have some long trades um, in this, is this the commodity? Yeah, um, we do have some long trades, some gold long trade futures contracts uh, in uh, in this um, uh, in this section um, as well here. So we'll have to come to come some kind of, you know, uh, understanding of how we're going to handle, manage that situation here. So this is the other count basically, you know, so that uh, takes us up. So looking at wave three here. So in the meantime, we've got wave one and two here and then three, we'll, the, the top of the wave three is already in. So I think so four and five, and we'll have a look at that. So, but we still got a little bit further to uh, move to the, uh, to the upside on that. So let's just go back into the daily chart here for a moment and look at this. So, coming back in here. So this is the more bullish count here. So this is looking at wave our uh, wave fours here and then wave one and two. And I'm looking at this as wave one and two here. Because one of the reasons I'm doing this for, and it's probably not the correct Elliott way to, to view this, but I understand that when you're working with large numbers like this, you get large orders and large orders can skew the market because it keeps pulling the you know the larger orders will gravitate at larger num at larger numbers that's how people think so um, it will it skews things out here so there's different ways to 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 view all this I could just ignore the spike here to start with that's one way of looking at it but I won't go into all that philosophical sort of stuff but in the meantime what we're looking at here is wave one two and we've got this little pull down here now while the dollar is doing a little rally to the upside uh, and then we'll see wave five up to there. So I'll see where the dollar is at that particular point in time. And if I can confirm that the dollar is going to be five ways down, either through the yields or the bonds or even the corporate bonds or anything, then I'll, I'll, um, <coughs> will <coughs> take part profit or hold through this wave two area here. So, um, but we've got time. We've got like, it'll take about, you know, wave one was you know, a good couple of weeks here at least. So we've still got a couple of weeks to get to the top of this as well. So we've got plenty of time to make decisions about that. And um, I haven't looked at silver for a little while, but um, with silver here, we've just got just on 1,000 ticks. We've got one and two and three, well, one, two, three, four, five for the third, looking for the fourth wave here. They can pull back to the fourth wave here and then push up here. Now, will these five waves turn into something else? That's something that we'll also need to manage um, at the medium level, but we've got plenty of time for that as well. Um, I'll just have a look at um, <clears throat> the count that we've got uh, here for silver. 
yeah, the same thing. Uh, he's got it in slot. He's got it different as well, but one, two, three, four, five. So we're, we're good to a probably, you know, 25, 30, 25, 50, maybe, maybe something in there. So we'll just, uh, hold on to that. I just do want to have a look at why I'm here at Coco for a moment. Right. Yeah. We should got to find a way in here. We can probably get in on the pullback of this now. So, um, so up for one and back for two. We should have been long at this point. So we'll do this other little move up here will be five waves. So we're going to get an ABC back and then we'll look to go in long at that. So I'll put that in the, um, the bigger picture here is quite strong. So that's all good. So I'll, I'll get around to that. And, uh, what do we need to look at next by the by? So let me just, um, let me get my list up here, my commodity list, so I can see what we've got. Um, yada, yada, yada. So we've looked at gold and silver. We need to have a quick look at the base metals and China. So, so let's go to, not that one, let's go to this charting program and I want to go over to I'll just use this one here but I'll have to go to the indices just bear with me for a second here while we go and have a look at we've been keeping an eye on China <clears throat> so just to rehash the situation a little bit I know China's in the poop at the moment and it's supposed to be putting money into things and yada, yada, yada. But um, apart from all of that, this is our monthly chart and we've got this wave three here with an Elliott wave triangle and A, B, C, D and E over here. I think it's finished at this point. So we can see the first impulse wave coming up here. <clears throat> so we've just really been observing it. Uh, we want to look at the volume. We want to see if it can actually develop support on top of the 3000. If that is going to be the case, then we're going to see a lift in commodities uh, in general, um, also in line with the uh, US dollar uh, moving lower once we can confirm that. And that's going to see all the, pro the well, we're going to see all the, com most of the commodities start to to reprice and some of them are moving up already like gold, but, uh, and copper's making a bit of a move. Um, lithium and a few others are still ser searching for their lows. Um, but yeah, we should see a, a change, uh, in the weather, uh, shortly on all of this. So just going into the weekly chart here for a moment. We've got this triangle pattern here. We've got the A, B and C here. And I'll just go into the daily now to have a look at this sitting at this level here. So it's taken a little while. We can see a couple of things here. I can see, see this little reverse triangle pattern here. So that will be a wave four. So this will be some sort of one and two in here, then one, two, three, four, five of the third wave and the fourth wave here. So we're in some sort of fifth wave here. So we're going to see we're going to see a classic trading levels pattern here. So this can just fit here. Basically, that's what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, so we've got a fair bit of while, a fair, fair while. Um, you know, this probably won't come down that much, but we will see some type of little correction come into play here. And that will leave us, uh, long, uh, here, um, on, on these in due course. So we'll just um, wait for that little pattern to play out there. But this will be, you know, the dollar will be a driving factor and this will also be a driving factor as well in in these base metals and uh, a, lot of, a lot of the other commodities and, and rare earths and so on, you know. So that is, um, that is China. So let's just go and have a look at some of the metals. So let's just, um, Let's just use um, this here for a moment. So let's just have a look at copper. So copper uh, has got this nice little one, two, three, four, five up here for this. This could play out a couple of different ways here. We may get the pullback here, or we could just continue to move to the uh, to the upside. We were looking at one of the uh, trades uh, in this, um, looking for a trade uh, in, in one of the um, 
uh, in the copper uh, plays. Um, so on the New York desk here, we've got um, Southern Copper and taking that top out here. So this is in the uh, portfolio, um, but as a stock trade. Okay, so that's in there. So that's sort of pushing up okay. The volume is, is okay. We've got diminishing volume as that's moving up there. So we've got divergence there. So it'll come back and test it, but you know, uh, it should be fine. Um, and we could look to add to this position uh, in due course. So that's kind of the copper play at the moment for, for, uh, for, um, for this. And then if we look at, um, uh, uranium here as well. So let's just have a look at, um, go to uranium first then we'll have a look at iron ore so this is you this is the ETF here so yeah so we're still in this corrective pattern here so we've got five waves down here so we're looking at a corrective pattern it still can be higher at, at the 30 here so it's a major trading level at 30 uh, and then we'll come down it could also drop from here as well but the point is that we don't have wave c in here yet we've got the nice wave a in five waves we're in wave b and wave b's are a little bit like wave fours they can get complicated so we're not really paying too much attention to this um, but when we get down to here we'll be looking for long trades uh in this market and we'll look at um iron ore so iron ore still in a you will see um this, yeah, this is the same count that I've got here as well. So the A, the B, and one, two, three, four on the spike and five here. And, uh, yeah, so we'll take a look at, um, uh, Rio, Vale, and FMG in due course, uh, for this move to the upside, but we're not quite ready on that, uh, just yet. And uh, what do we need to look at next in this area here? Well, we're going to have a look at um, at uh, for one of our members. We're going to have a look at uh, he was going to move into um, to uh, ALB, which is a lithium play um but he's decided to go for this one here looking at this here so it's quite possible um that i mean this is following lithium so this 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 etf here must be weighted in that direction i did have a look at black rocks uh etf as well which i thought was a little bit better managed but in terms of this here we've got this um this remind all this pattern here reminds me of Piedmon as well, so I think that we're probably into that uh, market. So, um, an A B C here for the A wave, and then an A wave here, and then an A B C for the B wave here, and then the C wave here. Then one, two, three, four, five. So we could have a low in place here, um, like China at the moment, but I I'm not seeing five waves here yet. Do you know what I mean? So we'll just sort of work on that a little bit. But the other one here, the BlackRock one here. <coughs> the iShares here is is a stronger pattern you know and we're sitting at 40 here which is also nice as well um so we've got a nice little five wave structure here as well so this is some sort of a wave b wave and c wave here but it doesn't count very nice as a c wave i i, I grant you i'll give you that but basically what it's telling me it's reluctantly wanting to go down you know so we need to see another impulse wave here to make that a little bit sort of exciting uh at this point so i'm just going to <clears throat> i'll put that into i'll put it into commodities but i might also just put it into my lithium stocks here as well and i think i'll just do this with this one as well to keep a bit of an eye on them it's in commodities i should chuck it in with the lithiums here i was also thinking too one of the best lithium plays around is in australia and this is pilbara minerals here by the by because it hasn't come down as much as the other players so um Anyway, that's just that. And Line Town's quite good as well, L LTR in Australia, if that's um, suitable for you. Um, so that kind of covers. I won't do I won't do nickel at the moment, um, but we'll move on to on to energy and uh, 
don't need this here. Um, so on the <clears throat> on the uh, let me just go to go to commodities here for a moment. So we're looking at um, crude oil. I'm staring at it there, I'm sure. Um, so this is crude oil. So in a bit of a nutshell here, we're looking for a move a move down. But I just don't know if it's going to, I, I, I don't know if we need to put that on top here just yet. There's different ways to count this move up here. Um, they could quite easily be when we're looking at um, Exxon Mobile and, and so on. There can be another move up here before coming down. So we're not going to call a trade on this. But the move up here, you can be assured, is corrective. This particular first move here, and this could also be labelled in a different way as well. But whichever way you want to label it, this move here is corrective. So it's just a matter of this playing out here. We'll look for, we're not seeing any increased volume on these little moves down here just yet. So not not ready to move on that. The natural gas, um, we've called a trade in on this and put it in the portfolio. Um, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't sort of see in the portfolio we've got, we've just basically got the natural gas, uh, you know, the March, uh, 24 contracts. We don't have the, um, I don't think we've got the NYMEX, um, uh, micro Henry hub natural gas futures, uh, in there. I just need to do a bit of work, a bit more work on that, but we're short with the stop above, uh, the two here, which would probably bring down, but I just want to be careful because this move that's coming down here so far, it could be viewed as wave one coming down, wave two here, and then moving down for wave three. So it could be like that uh, because sometimes, as I've just mentioned before, you can get a nice little five wave like this and everything's nice and, and, and easy. Or you can get a situation where you'll get wave one and two um, and then one and two and one and two and, you know, then it stretches itself down at that point. So there's two ways to view this, uh, two ways to view this. So the point being is I'm going to leave the stop I'm not going to bring the stock close to the market uh, at this uh, at this point. I'll just check with um, I'll just check on our commodities here what um, our analyst has done here. So yeah, he's got it coming down. So we've set the target down here at um, at one thirty. Um, it, it can come lower, of course, but we always get a nice bounce off the um, 130 um, as such. And I'll just have a look at how he's viewing <coughs> crude oil as well here, just why we're here. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, I can see the same thing. We can we can go higher here. Yeah. Yeah, his, his count works as well. The, uh, yeah, there's different ways to, to view this. This is actually probably more correct than than uh, the way that I was thinking, actually. But uh, we're lucky to have uh, lucky to have all our analysts, actually. They're all pretty fantastic. Um, so uh, that's it in a nutshell. I think we've covered uh, most of the commodities that we wanted to have a bit of a look at. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's that. Alrighty. Um, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.